Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. You know, <laughs> we are watching TikToks, Instagram Reels. What else, what else is that? Things, stuff. You can tag me in anything you see that you're like, hmm. On Instagram, uh, TikTok, message it to me in Twitter. Whatever you're feeling, all my socials are down below and on screen right now. Just at me in them and let's take a look. Do consider subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up. Let's go. I know I look crazy, but I really need to show you this brush. I swear no matter what I do, my under eye concealer just never looks smooth and seamless until this, until this. Okay, let me just show you this magic. The way it blends in the concealer, it's flaw, like, are you, are you looking? The coverage, the seamless, it literally looks like it's just my skin. It's the Sigma F03 High Cheekbone Highlighter Brush. You need it. You know why? <laughs> because it's fluffy, but it's flat at the same time. So with a flat brush and concealer, you're pushing it into the skin. You get more of a tap into the skin. Whereas with something that's wider and fluffier, for example, although I do like eyeshadow blending brushes for concealer, it's, it's going to... Um, spread it out more because you're doing more of a sweeping motion. Whereas if you're going in with a flat brush and tapping, but you also have this fluffy curve to it, you're getting a really nice mixture of tapping in and buffing at the same time. So you get a really nice natural finish. It's a great brush for powder. It's a great brush for um, anything you want to have that good smooth coverage, but not heavy because you're buffing but pushing at the same time. I love Sigma, by the way. I have my own brush set with Sigma, so. No. No, 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 no. Exactly. Beautiful. We still doing this, this powder thing under the eyes. Is that still happening? Like, yes, you, like, use powder under the eyes. Absolutely, because, you know, because you can and because you absolutely can but <laughs> but the the baking thing has got to stop it has to it has to end soon because it doesn't it doesn't look nice <laughs> and when people are like i do it and it looks really nice to me and then i'm like i'll tell you why under eyes are drier than our eyelids eyelids oily under eyes dry we're gonna crepe it all up with powder people are like it stops my my creasing what makeup can't do is stop your skin's movement it's not gonna stop your under eyes creasing it might give the appearance of your makeup might physically not create those lines but your skin looks dry it looks dry now if you're very lucky and have incredibly smooth under eyes and you're good if you have more of a textured under eye don't bake hydrate don't bake if your makeup always looks dry and cakey no matter what foundation you use i'm gonna show you a simple hack to fix that this is gonna sound crazy but you're gonna apply moisturizer on top of your makeup to do this i like using eco fabulous ultra hydrating moisturizer you're gonna apply it on the back of your hand and lightly press it in with a beauty sponge the niacinamide and squalene from the moisturizer is gonna melt all that makeup into your skin leaving you with a smooth yet glowy complexion the reason that's probably that's probably not a good thing to do for most people. Squalene is an oil, um, and it's it's actually in a lot of makeup removers also. But putting an oil on top of a foundation that has already been broken down, more likely by oil, it, it's not it's not gonna smooth it out in any way. If your makeup looks like that. I would just go ahead and give up and take it off and reapply. There are certain places where you can fix it, and so, you know, around the nose especially, but I would, I would, I would think about what's breaking it down in that case for it to be that bad. Bro, who is paying you bitches to lie for these fucking makeup brands, bro? I'm done. If y'all don't get on here and start telling the fucking truth about shit, bro, I, I am so fucking irritated right now. And don't come for me when I bring out these two products that I fucking got that I absolutely fucking despise right now. Because y'all ride or die for this shit and I literally see it on TikTok all the time, which is why it took me literally months, months to get this fucking shit. These bitches. $80, bro. There's literally... You hear that? There's literally no product in here. When I tell you that I had to literally squeeze and I felt how much product was in here, bro, literally nothing. Nothing. I had to squeeze. Literally, there's probably maybe this much product in here. $80 for these two things. And honestly, I'm not even that frugal with my money because I believe in investing in good makeup. Like if it's amazing and it blends well and shit like this. But bro, literally two out of 10, 
6 out of 10. I would rather use my fucking Makeup by Mario or my Rare Beauty fucking bronzing stick over this shit, bro. Over this shit. Literally, it damn near blends away to nothing if it even blends away at all. This is the same fucking way, bro. So stop lying. Like, I'm... I ain't never been this shitty, but this just pisses me off. Overpriced, overhyped by influencers. Constantly. That brand, Charlotte Tilbury, is at best just fine. Just fine. And I've used some of their products. That night cream is like sleeping with, I don't know, glue on your face. It it's it's not the best. <laughs> And here's, here's the deal as well. There's something about that brand that influencers just love hyping up and it really isn't, there are better, there is better. I don't know what it is, it's, I don't know. I don't know whether they give them loads of PR or they love buying their ads, but it's just not, it's not as great as people make out. Like it's fine, people use it and they like it, but the, the overhype of that brand is something else. That is horrendous, but let me tell you why I'm not surprised. Let me let me tell you this, right? In most makeup, let's start let's start from the the thing. In most makeup schools, they do not teach how to do all skin tones. They do not teach it. You you do it on your friend next to you or another person in the class. And what if everyone in your class is white? You know, like where are you gonna get that experience from? I mentioned this before, but I used to help people put together their kits, right? So they would come in from a school. And I'll be go. This is when I worked for Mac, and they will come in, and we'll spend like a good few hours with them before we opened, and we'll make help them sort out their kits um, to go into the world of business in London, the world of being a makeup artist in London, where everyone exists and everyone lives of all ethnicities. And I don't know if it's something they were being told while learning makeup, but when it came to sorting out the foundations and what they need, right? We would always do, because they were students on a budget, we would have maybe like three light tones, right? Maybe two mid tones and then three or four deeper tones and mix. When you're a makeup artist, you don't want your kit to be too heavy. You want it to be quite light and you can decanter all these foundations into something else. So you should have enough shades for everyone and I mean everyone so what if your clients aren't usually black or they aren't usually that pale what if you're on set one day and you have a model and you don't have a skin tone how fucking embarrassing how embarrassing for you as a makeup artist how embarrassing I've had to help people um who couldn't do deeper skin tones for some reason were unable to do it. I've had to even lend people bits from my kit in professional settings because they don't have the right stuff. This, there's this mindset in these schools that are teaching people and also like from makeup artists where they don't need to cater for deeper skin tones because they rarely do a deeper skin tone. Okay, fair enough. But what about when you do? What about when you do? What, when, what about when a time comes to it? Oh, what you can do, um, what, what's that conversation like? Oh, I'm so sorry, I can't do your makeup today. Why? Because I don't have anything for you in my kit. Why? Why? Embarrassing. Just a little heads up here. My, um, I forgot to record again on my microphone. So the sound is from my camera. It's not too bad, it's bearable. And there's not long left of a video. So <laughs> it's okay, sorry. One tip I have as a makeup artist is when you're young, a lot of times, to balance, you have a ton of vibrancy in your skin, a lot of things you're worried about looking too orange, you're look worried about looking too red, you're trying to get a little depth and structure. And so you use a lot of cool toned products. And as you age, you lose a lot of the vibrancy in your skin. So think of products that look almost neon, blushes that look like hot pink, you're gonna be able to use less product, which is always great and helps with the texture, helps with everything lasting a long time. And then you'll also just be balancing where you're balancing when you're young with a little bit of cool. As you age, you wanna kind of move that to the other direction. So I would say avoid cool toned blushes, avoid um, cool toned contours or bronzers, and really think of warming everything up.
That's the one thing I get asked a lot, like throughout a makeup, my makeup career, any tips for mature skin? Now remember, I always say this, mature skin isn't an age, it's a skin type. So it doesn't mean just because you suddenly hit like 50, you have mature, mature skin. You might have a, a skin that's actually quite young for your age, but if you do feel you have mature skin, exactly like the artist said in that video, I mean, I find it quite funny how she said almost neon, and I think, by not saying that she means this, but I think in, in my mind, what what um, comes to mind when she says neon is those glow from within products. So to me, that's something like a baked mineral blush, a pressed mineral blush that has this glow that looks like on the cheeks, it looks like a flush of colour, but with that mineral aspect, it gives this glow from within kind of look. So it's adding that healthiness and that glow and that vibrancy back to the skin. Think radiation. <laughs> You want products that look healthy. We don't want to powder too much. We don't want to mattify too much. Again, we don't want those cold, um, grey tones because that greyness adds that um, lack of light and vibrancy. Again, I mean, you look here on my cheeks, there's nothing light and vibrant about this. There's nothing light and vibrant about this. Whereas if, if this was a pinky peach or like a nice, like, um, soft, you know, um, coral, it, it adds that vibrancy back to the skin and it adds that healthy, Glow, I've been eating my vegetables, you know? I don't think that's a good idea. Grey, it looks really grey. Your contour is meant to be grey, but it's meant to be a controlled amount of greyness. Even the highlighted areas look grey. <laughs> so you have this grey patch just in the middle of your face. It doesn't look good. It looks fine on camera, well, fine loosely, but it's, it doesn't look nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Keep tagging me in those videos. Keep, um, yes, consider subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.